Hello, I'm Kenny. And I'm Miranda. And we're going to be giving week 29 of Stepping Forward. This uh, this week it is subtitled Walking Wisely. All right, Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So the dictionary definition of wise says having or showing experience knowledge and good judgment now it's interesting to me that the definition of uh, that definition uses the word and and not or meaning that a person has to meet all three of those uh, experience knowledge and judgment to be considered wise common way to assess if somebody is wise is an iq test about 68 percent of people uh, have an iq between 85 and 115. Uh, those who get a score of 130 or better are considered very intelligent, and scores above 200 are very, very special people. Uh, I found a website that lists 40 of the smartest people who ever lived. Some of the well-known names on that list are, of course, Albert Einstein, Galileo, Nikola Tesla, and Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, the contributions these individuals have made to science, literature, philosophy, and really just everyday life are very considerable. And due to those accomplishments, they very well could be considered wise. They meet the, all three of those definitions. Um, however, there's other people on this list. There's a kid named Anan Cowley from Singapore. When this list was made, I think it was 2006, his IQ was measured at over 300, but he was only 14 years old. Um, he was at six years old. He was giving chemistry lectures and enrolled in college in Singapore at eight years old. Now, he is obviously a very smart kid, but at his age, he's only experienced a fraction of life's experiences. So I can't say for sure whether his vast knowledge resulted in good judgment, but I'd be willing to bet that when he was a young kid, you know, a little baby, probably his parents had to say, hey, don't do that, it'll hurt, or, you know, don't touch that stove, it'll burn. So maybe not good judgment at that young age, but obviously very smart. So according to the definition, we could say he's knowledgeable, but maybe not necessarily wise because of the lack of good judgment. Another individual that we consider to be very wise, although he would never make any list you'd find on the internet because he's a Bible character, is King Solomon. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 11 through 15, we learn that God gave Solomon wisdom like no king had ever seen. During his 40-year reign, he created treaties with foreign powers, built the temple in Jerusalem, and wrote much of Proverbs, Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, and even a couple of Psalms. Although, just like many of the other kings in the Old Testament, Solomon too succumbed to the worldly pleasures. He enslaved many of his subjects to build the temple, taxed them heavily, and amassed great wealth and treasures. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Uh, many of them were not Jewish, and he allowed them to... Um, to worship their own native gods. Uh, he was controlled by lust rather than being obedient to God. And beginning in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 9, we learn about the enemies God brought up against Solomon because of his sins. So we can conclude that Solomon had plenty of ex expertise and was very knowledgeable, but did not show good judgment at times, resulting in his downfall. In week 29 of the book of Stepping Forward, Pastor Mike recalls a time when he was counseling a fellow brother in Christ who was going through a difficult stage in life. It became evident to Mike that this man had made some bad decisions and was now dealing with those repercussions. Pastor Mike notes that when we avoid the still small voice of the Holy Spirit's counsel and the clear warnings and directions of God's word, we place ourselves on a very rocky road and that neglecting wisdom will surely result in poor decision making. So the definition of wise for a Christian is a little bit different than that dictionary definition above. For a Christian, to walk wisely, we are to heed the counsel of Almighty God, listen to His direction, bathe in His truth, and display the fruit of His Spirit. Sounds easy enough, right? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty tall order. But for a believer in Jesus Christ, this is both a possible and plausible undertaking. Here's uh, Pastor Mike's challenge for you this week. Have you made a series of bad decisions in your life? 
do you think that if those situations popped up again, that you would walk according to God's will, the outcome would be different? There will be times we will make the wrong decisions because of selfishness. But these times can be drastically reduced if we walk wisely on our daily basis. The next decision you have to make, will you seek the counsel of God, ask God to bring back to remembrance what he taught you, um, his holy word. Eventually, the decision-making process gets easier and easier. The more we listen to God, the clearer he becomes. Start now and listen and obey, and then enjoy walking wisely. Thank you for tuning in. God bless.